Well, Singapore's coastline is more hardy against climate change than previously thought. Even with high rates of sea level rise, thousands of years ago, a new NTU study says the southern coast remains intact and has even extended seawards. And that has got to do with levels of sediment. Well, to explain what this means, we have with us research assistant Professor Stefan Chua. He's from NTU's Earth Observatory of Singapore. Dr. Chua, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you are the lead author of this study. It concludes that Singapore's coastlines, the shores, are resilient. That sounds like good news. Indeed it is. In fact, this uh, study by NTU Surf Observatory of Singapore provides a very positive outlook with regards to Singapore's coastal protection efforts. I think this study shows that around eight to 7,000 years ago, when sea level was five millimeters per year, now, this is a very significant number because it's slightly higher than today's sea level rise rates of about three to four millimeters per year, but it's within range of projected sea level rise rates. However, we found that our coast at the south not just held its ground, but advanced seaward, sort of an ancient land reclamation project, if you would. So this shows that sedimentation rate plays such a, high, a good part in preserving and protecting our shorelines in the past. Arjun, we've already given the, the answer where it's, it's, it's essentially levels of sediment that are giving the coast some protection against what, would ex what we would expect in terms of erosion. What exactly is sedimentation and how, how exactly does it make our shores more resilient? Well, sedimentation refers to the erosion or transport of material such as sand, gravel, stones, rocks, um, muds, into, by, by agents such as water or wind, in this context water, into our waterways, so into our rivers, our coastlines, and it actually replenishes any lost sediment at our coast. So that's important in preserving the coastline, which is basically built on sediments. Mm. How did you go about choosing where to take these samples from? Because you understand that uh, there were some samples taken from the Marina South area. Yes. What's the process of, of that selection? Actually, this study is a 10 year, 10 year in the making from pl planning to publication. So at first we had to understand the, the geology of Singapore, what's underneath. And then we selected Marina South because it has a very thick unit of past uh, muds that actually records past environmental change. So we went there and we drilled a 40 meter core and we took out the sediments, and sediments have layers, much like Quilapis. So these layers actually record past environmental change. And then we could analyze this change, understand sea level dynamics, and understand coastal change in the past. Right. right. This sample, you said the Quilapis of soil, showed uh, what has happened in the past. And of course, a lot of science is based on then coming up with a generalization so that we can then build a model of what might happen in the future. Is that what you have done with your Quilapi sample? Actually, this the key to the the key is that the past is the key to the present and the key to preparing our future. So understanding the past enables us to have a kind of an analog to the natural systems that, that we have not seen under conditions in the last 200 years. So, for example, the sea level rise rate of 5 millimeters per year, we have not encountered it. So we do not understand how our coast will respond in the future. The only way we can do so is to look at the past. And the past shows us quite convincingly that even at high sea level rise rates, our coastlines with high sedimentation influx could keep up and ultimately progress or extend seaward. So uh, I think you mentioned earlier on when you were speaking to Dawn, uh, eight to 7,000 years ago, the, the, the sea level rise was at five millimetres. Right? And I think your organisation has predicted by 2000, 2100, we're looking at as much as 0 0.79 metres mm -hmm. in sea rise, and by 2150, as much as 1.37 metres. Uh, based on everything that you know, how prepared are we even with this natural process of sedimentation to deal with these potential sea level rises? To this end, I think uh, I want to applaud. I'm very proud that Singapore has invested heavily 
and it's very creative in its coastal protection plans, whether in solutions to do with nature-based solutions or hybrid solutions. However, nature-based solutions like mangroves require sediments to be trapped, and sediments are the building block. So to this end, I, I would say that we need to complement all these solutions with understanding how, where and when sediments move. In other words, sediment monitoring and management will become a key part of the strategy to be a comprehensive approach to protecting our coastlines. Well, thanks so much for coming in and joining us and explaining all that to us this evening. That was a lead author of a study on Singapore's coastline, research assistant professor Stefan Chua from NTU's Earth Observatory of Singapore.